two, one, start. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's presentation or today's webinar, I should say, on Microsoft Teams. Uh, we're going to give it uh, another minute or two before we start. Just let anyone who's joining us still join us um, and we'll, we'll kick off uh, in, like I said, in a few minutes. Uh, it'd be great to know who's out there. Uh, so in the um, in the uh, Q&A se section, uh, if you can put your name and where you're calling from or the chat section and we'll give you a bit of a shout out. Hopefully we'll speak to us so soon. Hi, um, Dan again. Uh, so I've just noticed the Q&A uh, option isn't working today, unfortunately. So I, I do apologise for that. Um, I don't quite understand why. So we will do questions. Uh, I suggest we'll do when we do questions at the end. Um, we'll get them submitted by email and then we'll collate them. Then we'll start to share them with you all. Uh, like I said, we'll still give it another 30 seconds before we start. Um, just to let anyone who's still planning on joining us to join us and then we'll kick off. Right, we'll start. So again, uh, welcome to today's webinar on uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, my name is Dan Felix and I'm joined today by Mark Knight. Um, I'm your host and Mark will be uh, your guest speaker for today. Just before I hand over to Mark and uh, to take us through Teams and a little bit more information, I just want to talk a little bit about BCN Group. Um, I'm conscious that some of you joining us today will be aware about who we are as a business and um, but for some of you we may be brand new to you so uh, I've got some uh, stats and figures on um, BCN group which I'll share with you now um, I'm not going to go through these in a particular order um, but uh, I just want to say that we've been around now for uh, over 10 years 11 in fact uh, April just gone was our 11th birthday uh, we're headquartered in Manchester uh, that's our primary office we're actually moving offices in Manchester uh, in the next few weeks, but we'll still uh, be within the city. Um, we also have offices in Leeds, in Chorley and in Runcorn. Though these are obviously very northern based locations, we do consider ourselves uh, an IT, MSP and IT uh, partner for businesses across the entire UK. <clears throat> we have a team of around about 180 uh, staff. Um, we That's grown rapidly over the last 18 months in particular. Um, at the start of 2019, we're only 40 members of staff. Uh, you can see how we've dramatically grown as a business. Um, the vast majority, around about 60% to 70% of our team, are made up of individuals within some form of a technical role. So whether that's pre-sales, to installations, to consultants, to uh, our IT support team. Um, the vast, like I said, the vast majority is made up of some form of technical role because we are a, we're a technology business. The rest of the team is either made up of uh, marketing and sales and of uh, sort of business operations and financial teams. We work with uh, over 1100 uh, different companies. Uh, a lot of them are uh, support customers. We have around about uh, around 800 support customers uh, and businesses uh, supporting over 30,000 individual users. We also have a customer retention rate around about 98 percent we don't tend to really talk about the two percent who have uh, who have left us and gone elsewhere but you can see that customers like to stay and continue to work with us as your partner as a uh, an msp uh, we offer a, a complete wide range of services which i'll go through now um pcn support um, as i mentioned before um the tech team 
as a whole is our biggest uh, team across the business, running up, taking up between 60 to 70 percent of our workforce. Uh, the biggest team within that technical role is our support team. We have we operate a unique pod system, which means that every business is assigned to a pod. That means that uh, you get to build a relationship up, a rapport and understanding with that pod and those individuals in that pod. Uh, but also they are fully focused. They are acutely aware of uh, your business, how your infrastructure works. That's quite unique in terms of not many of uh, um, other MSPs operate that approach. Um, we provide BCM protect based services, so that is primarily all about keeping the bad guys out of your infrastructure through cyber security defences. Um, but it's also about keeping your data safe and protected for when a natural disaster occurs or there's, uh, there's water damage or fire to an office or to your service say it's ensuring that through our business continuity solutions or cloud based they um your business operations can be put back up and running in hours and minutes and not days and weeks in the more traditional methods bcn development we were quite unique as well um we have over 20 years experience um of a team that through an acquisition that we made earlier this year of uh, bespoke application software and SharePoint development as well. Um, they can work with uh, new forms of coding as well as legacy coding to enhance your existing applications or to build a new uh, support function, uh, sorry, uh, uh, software function. Uh, but also um, we can build bespoke uh, SharePoint and other Microsoft 365 applications as well. BCN Collaborate um, is one of the reasons why you're all joining us today. We um, 2020, I, I think it goes without saying, has been a very interesting year. Many of us are still working from home. So our BCN Collaborate services have been widely popular this year and how we can ensure that as businesses, we remain productive as individuals, we remain collaborative and agile. Um, though we are working disparately and from different locations, some of us are still going slowly going back into the into the office. Some of us, uh, like myself, I'm still working from home a lot at the moment. Um, and I, my feeling is, we're going to 2021. That hybrid approach to a workplace, or splitting your time between home and between the office, uh, will continue. So it's how we can uh, provide service and solutions like Teams, like Cloud Telephony, like Microsoft 365 to enhance those collaborate um, services. And BCM platform, well, we, it's about where everything sits, basically. I think it's fair to say um, how um, how we can, you know, using cloud or hybrid or on-premise, build you an infrastructure, build you a platform uh, in which all your applications or your business critical services can sit upon um, whilst, you, whilst you remain productive and agile as a work team, as a workforce. Um, Amongst all of that, we, you know, in order to deliver those services, we have we we work with a wide range of different technology partners. Uh, I'm not going to go through them all. You know, we've got better things to hear from today with Mark talking about Teams. Um, but to get a flavour, uh, especially around this modern workplace and collaborative approach, we work with Pollen Yaylink in terms of um, headsets and Microsoft Teams com compatible devices. We've got security and partners, making sure your data remains safe. We've got backup partners. So if you lose any documentation, you can secure it back. And we've got hardware partners as well. We're, we we consider ourselves as a technology partner, not only providing services, but our, you know, individual type services like some MS, MSPs out there. We provide a full range of that holistic approach to technology. Uh, but more importantly and more relevant to today's um, webinar is uh, we are a Microsoft Gold partner. We uh, have part, we have accreditations across the entire board where it comes to Microsoft. Um, we have uh, application development, which is only just joined. We've only just secured that this year. We've got collaboration content. We've got Gold Platform. We've got Gold Data Center. We've basically got all the major, I think it's fair to say, all the major Microsoft Gold uh, partnerships and accreditations. Um, we are a Microsoft first partner. Uh, we are a direct CSP, which means that we have direct access to Microsoft um, and we could buy directly through Microsoft. So um, that's kind of it for me from this stage. Um, again, apologies that the, um, the Q&A section isn't working. Um, I think what we'll do at the end, if you want to email your questions across to Mark and I, we'll share our contact details at the end of this and we'll, we can come back to you. 
Um, I usually say it's an interactive session. Unfortunately, it can't be with the Q&A section not working. So without much further ado, I'd like to hand over to Mark Knight for today's, rest of today's presentation. Perfect, lovely. Um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, as Dan said, I'm Mark Nice. I'm the Cloud Communications Consultant over at um, uh, BCN Group, uh, currently streaming live from one of our customers up in Hull today. Um, so I'm currently um, sat in one of their meeting rooms doing this. So proof that you can do these things from truly anywhere. Um, what we're talking about today, well, Microsoft Teams. Um, how Teams has evolved, certainly over the last 12 months, and how Teams is continuing to, continuing to evolve and put um, integration and development into their applications, making your lives more productive. Um, you know, it's, it's an ever-changing workplace. Mobile and social, you know, 45% uh, of people these days use social tools at work four times as many devices per user in any place and anywhere uh, this is no more true than actually myself um, I have sat in a little tiny huddle room at the moment two laptops and a mobile phone all connected to the same meeting on completely different uh, network connections my mobile to make sure that things are working properly my um, second laptop to, to show some Teams integration and my main company laptop to, to actually do this webinar with. Uh, you know, me as an individual user, I have many, many devices to my disposal, um, all synchronized using Microsoft Teams. That's the beauty of the application is you can pick up a device and walk away knowing that you've got all of your applications, you've got all of your data, and that you can communicate with individual people, both internally and externally. It's a diverse system. Uh, you know, multi-generations are now working together in one workforce. 72% 70, of workers will be working remotely by 2021. Um, this start, obviously, Microsoft start during uh, back end of last year has completely changed. Uh, you know, you should say 100% of all workers will be working remotely by 2020 um, due to the, the pandemic happening. Um, luckily, in this day and age, we can do that. You know, we work remotely if you can do so. Well, we can. You know, uh, office spaces, uh, something I've been doing a lot of recently is looking at customers' meeting rooms and going, right, well, you, you once had a, a phone sat on a desk and then a laptop sat in the corner of the entire meeting table, um, mainly for audio conversations, just someone to dial in, um, and then maybe a video conversation, you know, off the end of a desk on a laptop. I go in and time nine times out of now that it'll be, well, I want to have a proper video meeting space now. My staff work remotely. We've got a few people in the office. Let's have a full meeting room solution in place all the time, ready to use. And we use Teams meeting rooms for that. And it's something else I'll go through this morning. You know, it's got to be self-service and it's got to be simple to use. Traditionally, Office 365 split into many, many sections. Um, extraordinarily large product with many application suites. So exchange or email your communications tool uh, via email communication. You've got uh, your contacts list, location, time, agendas and action items all within that traditional exchange environment. Um, Skype for Business, which of course was acquired by Microsoft a number of years ago uh, for their uh, instant messaging service and their audio uh, VoIP calling abilities. You know, they, they, we're talking over 10 years ago, Skype was um, acquired. SharePoint, another major element of Microsoft Teams um, is the SharePoint libraries. That's a, a content management system bespoke to you, bespoke to your organization, where you can store all of your company data, all of your individual data. Your OneNote, where you can share and collaborate with whiteboards and notes and section meetings, you draw on the screen and it updates in various locations at the same time. We can record meetings like this one now, push that straight to our Microsoft Stream account and whereby then we can view that recorded meeting online or we can share that out to many people. And applications. Microsoft prides itself on its many application stack integrations. They have loads of their own little application suites as well, some of which we'll go through today. So we've got Planner and Trello. Uh, we can also integrate things like Salesforce and other apps directly into Microsoft Teams. All of these functions, individual sections of the Microsoft ecosystem all feed together to create Microsoft Teams. Teams itself, the core application itself, of course, Windows, Microsoft Desktop, Mac OS, iPhone, iPad, Android phone, whatever flavor of hardware you feel like using, Teams is there for you. The Teams element itself, 
group chat, audio stream, video and screen sharing, along with content delivery. We've also got SharePoint, which synchronizes your document library. So your shared company documents can now be cloud hosted, but available on your PC, on your Mac or on the web. It also integrates with OneDrive. OneDrive, of course, is driven by Microsoft SharePoint. So your own individual OneDrive data is also available within Teams applications. We've got OneNote, again, that live sharing of whiteboard and note data all within the Teams application. The stream information and, and recording of webinars and video calls and audio chats all available within the Teams app. And then, of course, the most powerful section, the exchange section, the email um, where it embeds itself into Microsoft Teams. So you can have email communication driven into a, a Teams chat or you can have things posted from email directly into a Teams group. These are all easy to do things, self-service functions within the Teams application. You know, video chat, uh, it's the most commonly used feature of the entire application is the video, the instant messaging. Um, I, I'm of the generation of, of MSN Messenger. I grew up around that. Um, that was the early days of Microsoft trialing instant messaging communications. Uh, for many years, you know, it became a it was a fad. It was a techie thing. It was it was something that the technology whizzes liked to use, but realistically didn't have its its place within business. These days, you know, couldn't be any more different. Um, we have real HD video VoIP and dialing audio um, solutions now. You know, I'm, I speak to you. I'm currently on my 4G Wi-Fi off my mobile phone uh, using a wireless headset. You know, true communications. I'm in HD audio at the moment using VoIP, so you can. You know, I've got clarity. I can see my screen in clarity as well. Um, I've got it on my mobile. I've got an Android phone, so I can see exactly what's going on. But we can also integrate full on what we call Skype room or Teams meeting room solutions. So these are purpose built solutions within to within a Teams application um, framework. So you can walk into a meeting room and have your Teams meeting. Um, there, click to join, don't need any physical equipment. You don't need to plug in HDMI cables, figure out what cable's right, your laptop's flat, you're not on the right network, you're not on Wi-Fi, you don't have any of that hassle. It's designed around simplicity. We can also put things like Surface Hub in, we can use interactive whiteboards, so you can share physical ideas drawn out on paper virtually to your audience. We can have meeting recommendations based on attendee availability. So if you invite 10 people to the meeting, it will look at those 10 people's individual calendars from exchange and go, well, only one of those people are available at 10 o'clock. However, at 11.30, everyone is currently free. How about moving your meeting back an hour and a half so to, meet, to suit everyone's availability? So Microsoft adapts to your lifestyle. It'll also pull up related files and chat history. Um, so if you had several meetings within a, a, a group chat, it will pull back all that meeting history, all the notes that you've taken. So board director meetings, you've got all that information at your uh, fingertips. But then, of course, it can be record, rec cloud recorded. You've got the audio transcriptions. You've got the audio files stored separately from the video files. So we've got true amounts of data at our fingertips all the time. Don't forget about the application stuff. Microsoft comes with a huge suite of its own apps um, designed around your performance. You can also have communications within each individual team and connect certain applications, both internally and externally. So, for example, SharePoint files can be added as a channel within your chat window um, and within a tab so you can see files straight from the top. So you don't have to go drilling in to find out where things are. You can also look at your uh, email integration as well. Like I said before, you can email into a, a team or a direct chat. So you've got proper, true native application experience. But then, of course, one to one communication. You know, we all have one to one communications. You can do an app request and add more people into that communication on the fly. You can share uh, communication history with someone as well. You can also send GIF stickers and emojis. I, I'd imagine all of you probably use Teams in some shape or form internally as part of our organisation. We've got group chats that are specifically there for social communications, but with our work colleagues, you know, uh, we can have a bit of a laugh inside a communications channel. It gives us that feeling of being in an office when we're not there. We can customise and extend. We can translate in from different languages. We can do the recording transcriptions. So if you went to your settings actions at the moment of this meeting and put on the live captioning, 
you would see as I'm talking the communication uh, the, the live transcription coming through. So if you've got someone in the meeting who's hard of hearing or we, uh, wants to ha have it spoken out aloud, you can have it on the screen so you've got a visual um, rep representation. It's mobile enabled. You know, I, I've got it on my mobile as well, so I can see exactly what's going on between my applications, as well as background blur. Um, I've got a video, um, my, my own video chat, which I'll put on later. Um, I've currently got a background blur switched on. We can change our backgrounds these days um, to have many different backgrounds. You know, you could be on uh, on the Millennium Falcon one minute and then sat in the, the living room of Family Guy the next because of background enablement. So it removes what you don't want to see in the background but also if you're on a customer chat you can have a far more uh, professional look to working from home we can tailor that workspace as well so as an admin we can force out different application stacks we can drive um, bots and, and um, application development based on what your team needs so if you've got a team that needs Trello integration or if you've got a marketing team that needs a uh, sales uh, monkey, uh, survey monkey integration or a uh, HubSpot integration, we can put that in as an admin and push that out to that specific team, all driven by Microsoft. What I'll do now is I will uh, swap devices with Dan's help and we will then jump into a demo um, of Teams itself in a live environment. OK, so what you're seeing now is uh, another PC entirely. Um, so this is my Microsoft um, uh, other Microsoft device. And I'm currently on a team there. So down there. So here's my Microsoft Teams. What I'm going to do is just hang up from that meeting because I'll get a, a repetitive window. So I can see from here I've got my chat functionality. And this is the desktop application on a Windows environment. So I can have one to one conversations with internal community uh, customers. So if I want to find someone internally, I can find someone internally just by typing their name and then I can have a chat with them. And if I want to share a particular document with that person, I can share it so I can upload from OneDrive or directly from my PC. So I can click on OneDrive here, look for a specific file. So current virus list, for example, and share that. No, this is an actual share link rather than just sending that document to the person. So now we've got what a collaboration between applications. We can also make a message really important. So I want to speak to that person. I want to make it really urgent. What that will do is it will prompt, prompt that person every two minutes until they respond to me. So they'll get a notification on their window. They'll get it on their phone. Even if they're in do not disturb, that will come through because I've set that as an urgency. We can also set it as important. So we can uh, settle, put certain chats in there or certain actions that are important. We can, of course, share GIFs. And emojis. We've got stickers, which you can specify as well. So if you want to do a, a group communication and, and champion someone who's done something really well inside the organization, we can put a sticker on there to give them a bit of a championship. We can schedule meetings. We can post things directly from stream. We can give someone some praise within the organization itself. So if you click on praise, it'll say send praise to people. So I want to say they're awesome. And it's going to be to Linda. You can pre preview that and then send that out. So that sends praise to someone. Now, if I wanted to add more people in, I could do an at request within the chat window and go at. And we'll add another user. We can add more applications here as well. So we've got Azure boards. 
We've got Jira Cloud. We've got some news places, Wikipedia search. So if I want to add a Wikipedia search in, I could add that in. So if I add a Wikipedia, now I can do a search. So I'll now do a direct, uh, direct wiki search. And I can post that directly into the chat. I could also pop out this chat. So I've now got this in a separate window. And then I could have a conversation with someone else. So for example, the, the, the actual meeting we're in now. I could then go to teams, look at individual teams. So here's the monthly reports. I could have a conversation here. So again, I can use a chat, so I can do at team. That'll send it to the entire team. And then that puts it in. And then we can have a reply section. So someone can reply to me and then I can reply back. So you can now see how this comes into a cascade style. Again, I still got all the same functionality I had before, but I can do that. But then you've also got files. And again, this is SharePoint. So I can now look into a SharePoint rep repository and I can look at all the sales data for this month. I could upload more files, either a file or a folder for my local PC, or I can create new documents and folders directly within my Teams window. I could open it in SharePoint if I wanted to, or if I wanted to share a particular document, I could go in and then copy the link. It's already within the cloud infrastructure. So all I need is link if you're sharing it internally. Everyone who has access to the monthly reports folder will have access to that. I could pin that on top. So I want to see that on the top every time. I could make it a tab. So what I'll do is now put the Brazil sales as a tab at the top, which will then open up directly into Excel. Again, still within Microsoft Teams. I could look at a specific sales report. Now this is opening, opening up Power BI. So I'm now getting a Power BI chart directly within my Teams window. I could make that larger if I wanted to, so I can then make that bigger so I can see what's going on and I can work with this data directly within Microsoft Teams. If I don't want to work within that team anymore, I could remove myself by leaving the team. I could add more people in, so I could add a member. So that'll add a group, and four members are already in that team. I could pin that, and that'll appear at the top there as a pinned. So no matter how many teams you're part of, it'll always appear at the top. I could get the email address for that, for that specific channel or that specific team. So that email address, anyone in the world could email that specific email address there. And every email going in would go straight to that team's window. We can manage tags. We could also get a link to that team. So if I want to share that team out, I've got a link there. And again, your teams can be shared externally as well as internally. So if you wanted to add external members in, as long as they're on Microsoft, they can have a, a link to see this. Now, one of the new features that are coming through uh, this month and next, and it was re reported just this morning, is the functionality like um, uh, public um, availability. So you can speak to external contacts. That's going to be turned on by default. We've also got um, the ability to share documents live in real time within Teams. The web app's going to have uh, some feature updates to make it a little bit more responsive, particularly when using Edge or Chrome. We've also got the activity window as well, so we can see exactly what's going on. Within the calendar section, again, synchronizing my Microsoft um, Exchange calendar with what's going on. I could look at today, I could change month, I could view a working week, day, or just a week in general if you work weekends. I could do a meet now, I could do a new meeting, or I could schedule a meeting directly from my Teams window. So I could create a meeting from here. Again, using that scheduling assistant, you can see whether people are available or not. And then of course, Teams is all about communications. So within this Teams client, I've got um, external calling switched on. So I'm using calls to Teams as a means of communications. So I've got an external telephone number and I can then start dialing some numbers. 
So if I dial my mobile, for example, I could dial it directly from my team's window and that'll call my mobile phone. I could look at my contacts. Again, if I shared my contacts, if I synchronized them with my device, I'll get my mobile contacts. And then a call history, of course, you can see what's going on from a call history perspective, both internal and external. And then, of course, any voicemails that come through will appear there, along with an audio transcription, uh, a text transcription of that audio call. So you can understand what's going on without having to play that back. You can, of course, mark that as red, which will appear as red there. You can call that person back, block that number or delete it. Then we've also got applications. So we've got shifts, we've got tasks, we've got uh, Wiki, Jira Cloud, Poly. We can do many more application installs by hitting more apps. And again, as an admin, we can restrict people from using this. So we can create forms or surveys and quizzes directly within the team's application. We can put Power Automate in there so we can have an automation within Microsoft Teams that says every time someone posts something to a particular channel, send an email to the management team to let them know something's been done. Or if you've got a task that someone needs to complete and they don't complete it, we can set up an automation to continually email them and tell them they need to complete that task. We can look at things like the weather. So if the weather's uh, for external use, you know, uh, people who work outside, the weather might be a really good application to add in to London, figure out what's going on in that local area for weather. And there are hundreds and hundreds of um, applications in here all available to use. If there's nothing there, you can, of course, upload custom apps. So if there is a customized app that you've built uh, as part of your on-prem organization, um, we can add that in. You can download the mobile app. We've also got the help section here so you can understand what's going on. It's got a full training suite, all again, built within uh, Teams itself to understand what's going on within Teams. So if there's nothing, is something you don't understand or you want to learn more about, the help section will give you fantastic guides and videos around how to do a particular thing within Teams. Um, that's generally the overview of Microsoft Teams. What I'll do now is I'll jump back into my presentation. So I've given you a flavor of what Microsoft Teams can do. But of course, you can deliver far more through there. So your telephony, for example, you can push all your telephony directly through Microsoft Teams. Why would you want to do this? Well, simplification. Uh, existing, I, I'm in a customer site at the moment, and they've got a physical desk phone on the little desk in my office. Um, historically, I would have to share something. Then I'd call someone on the physical desk phone. Then I'd have a phone to my ear, and then I'd be talking. Uh, as well as sharing something or I'd have an audio chat but someone wanted to dial in well it, it causes confusion and you've got multiple systems at play what you can do is you can push all your calling directly through Microsoft Teams usually a unified experience it's all cloud-based as well uh, it, it's it's a call from anywhere solution as well so whether you're in the office or working from home you've got the ability to have that that office-based communication so if you want to present as the off, off, outbound office number yeah, it's a single application. I showed you that I can make a call using my telephone number. I can also have multiple contacts in there. When you're having a call, I want to physically take a call on my phone. Well, Yaelink provide very good hardware for taking physical voice calls on, on desktop devices. So you don't have to get rid of that physical desk phone in the office. You can still have that. You can use Teams telephony to drive many things. Now, around the licensing side, um, Microsoft has a prerequisite, of course, a requirement. Um, so if you're using Business Essentials, Premium or M365 Business or any of the E-range licenses, or if you've gotten all of those and you've got something um, specialized or, or customized for your solution, we can look at your licensing and say, right, well, you're going to need to add on a phone system license. And then we can drill that into using um, called Teams. 
A call to Teams is a very good application that will interface your existing phone system or cloud-based phone system, or even on-prem, doesn't really matter, with Microsoft Teams. So it gives you your staff the ability to make those outbound, inbound calls, but not within the office system or using a third party application stack. It delivers it without any hardware. So there's no physical on-premise SPC hardware to go where to put in place. There's no uh, massive outlay expense other than, than installation costs. Um, and you can use your current phone system and its current numbers. So providing your phone system communicate can communicate externally via SIP protocols, we can interface with it. And if it doesn't, well, we are a telephony provider, so we can provide calling systems either with Microsoft's own application stacks or business voice, or if you need something more complicated, we could look at using Ring Central as, it, as the backend solution and then deliver it through the Teams application. So you've got a very advanced and very customizable phone system, but connected to a very simplistic and very easy to use customer tool or employee tool. I hope that's uh, been helpful for you. Um, happy to take any questions now. Um, I hope the Q&A is now working. I don't know, Dan, is it? Well, I've, I've got good news, everyone. Good <laughs> news. It's working. It might just be my side. Um, yeah, so see, it, it now be working. We've already had uh, one or two questions through already, which is great. Um, so if you've got any questions um, before we go into ask the questions we've already got, uh, please feel free to put them into the Q&A section uh, and I'll read them out. We've got questions coming through again, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so please feel free to put them in there and I'll read them out. And then, uh, yeah, some great questions coming through. So the first one, um, it'd be great as well. Sorry, it'd be great as well. Um, some of these are coming through as anonymous. Um, be great if uh, you can say uh, your name or the company you're calling from so we can credit you the question as well. So the first question, it is from anonymous. Uh, can you prevent new teams being created except by certain administrators? Yes, you can. Uh, so again, Microsoft this morning, I got the email about eight o'clock this morning when I turned up on hold, um, have done some more development around this. So private teams and um, the ability to remove uh, the ability, the ability to remove the ability of adding teams has now been rolled out as a general release. So that means that if you do not want your users to see private teams, they don't, and you can't see them in the global address book either. Or if you want your administrators to restrict the addition of any teams at all, Again, you can do that, all driven by group policy. Great, lovely. Um, next question, again from Anonymous. Um, does Business Voice call to Teams link with Panasonic NS700? <laughs> uh, oh, you're testing my expertise now. An NS700 is, is an analog, hybrid analog system. The, the short answer in my head would be no, because it doesn't have SIP trunks, but you may have a card on it that does. So uh, again, drop us an email and we can have a look at that one. Okay, lovely. Uh, next question. Can you restrict the um, data and documents leaving Teams for any external sources? Yes. Now, this is very, uh, it, it's more of a SharePoint question that, than a Teams question. So what you've got to think about is all the documents and data within the Teams application is all held and stored on Microsoft, on Microsoft SharePoint. So if you've got data loss prevention or conditional access or conditional sharing policies enabled on your Skype, uh, on your SharePoint, infrastructure or we want to it will feed directly into microsoft teams so that that's how you get around it so to, to think about it around sharepoint um security delivered within a microsoft Teams setting okay great um i've got a question for you mark yep. so before i go to that if any other questions that want to come through please send them through and i'll read them out for mark while we still got him um so yeah a question from me can you communicate with people outside your domain through teams Yes, and Microsoft again are making this far easier. So up to now, and including now, because it hasn't quite been released yet, um, you have to know the full email address of the person you wish to speak to, and only if they are Teams or Skype for Business enabled. And there is a current issue where if you are Skype for Business and your admin has set up Skype for Business communication only, and you can't communicate with Teams, a Teams person can't talk back, although to Skype for Business could. Microsoft are combating this, and they're now going to be, again next year, releasing the ability to communicate with anyone that has an email address, even if they're not on the Microsoft ecosystem. What it will do is we'll just email them. So if you've got a, a Gmail account, you, you have nothing to do with Microsoft, it will send you an email 
saying you've got a chat within Teams, someone wishes to communicate with you, you can now, or will do, be able to join that Teams chat via the browser without having to create a Microsoft account, which is fantastic because that's something Microsoft have been very reluctant to release in the last uh, last few years. Okay, great, thanks Mark. Um, where do you go about and you access um, more of the um, integration of all of that other applications? And is there a way if your application isn't within that area um, that you can integrate it into Teams? Yeah, so Teams currently has uh, two areas where you add apps. So you can add applications via the team or the channel within the team, or you can add an application right from the top. So if you look at the bottom left hand side where it says help and you both that you've got apps, that's where you'd add applications. If the application isn't listed there, you can add an app to the Microsoft ecosystem. Now, again, that's more of an admin sort of task because generally end users wouldn't add apps to the ecosystem unless they specifically have the permission to do so. Um, and you generally need tenant access to, to, to effectively federate that, that, that communication. Um, now, if it's something that needs to be custom made, again, BCM, we've got our own developing team and we can develop custom apps uh, to interface with Microsoft Teams. So, for example, we've created an I.O. bot that works with our uh, I.O. Uh, communications tool or our ticketing system directly into Teams so we can send information back into um, same sort of idea. Great, lovely. Um, so just before we wrap up, um, a couple of things uh, I'd like to uh, let you know as well that could be a great use as well for you all. Um, within Teams itself, at the bottom, if you need any sort of like hints and tips or guides or anything, we at BCM we have our own documents and our own video stuff like that, which we will share uh, with you after this. Uh, within the help bit, um, at the bottom, there's what's new and training. There's lots of little helpful little hints and tips and videos in there as well on how to use Teams. Um, one of the biggest tools, and I, I, Mark, I don't think you showed this, did you? Um, it, I find is that um, Teams obviously was invented to try and break down uh, which you might trying to make communication a lot easier. We've all been in that situation in which where you've got a message, uh, an email that you want to forward over to several different people and then you forward it over and everyone starts to engage with that conversation at certain different times. There is a little cool function uh, which we'll make sure we share as well, which I think is always valuable to use, is um, within, a, uh, within a team area, within a chat area, um, at the top, you can click uh, send email. That gives you a unique email address, which you then, when you forward um, an email into from Outlook or from your um, email function into Teams, it will appear as it would do in your normal Outlook. And that way you can engage, you can have a conversation around that email. That's one of my favorite functions. And I would encourage you all to try and use it as well. Like I said, we've all got that problem when we've all we've shared for an email and everyone just gets a bit lost. Um, and that's kind of it for today, folks. Um, so I want to thank you very much for joining us. We have some additional webinars taking place next week, which I want to encourage you to, uh, to join us with. Uh, one is around service continuity and um, in this time where we're all working desperately, as I mentioned earlier, we're all working from home, making sure that uh, devices are up to date, there's no loss of performance, um, whether from individual devices or from um, network devices maintained. Um, that uh, webinar is entitled Keeping Your IT Ahead of the Game. That's taking place next Tuesday, 10, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, we've got our uh, guest speakers on that from uh, the uh, company that we use, a partner that we use called ConnectWise, who helps support our service continuity um, offering. Uh, and we've got a webinar a week today as well, around about this time, uh, 10, uh, sorry, 11 a.m. to 12 noon. That's on modern workplace security. Again, you know, it's, it's about keeping your end users and their devices safe and secure. What tools are out there? And many of them through your Microsoft 365 function already that are available to you that you can use to make sure that your end users and your data is kept safe. Um, we'll make sure you get a copy of today's slide deck and uh, the on-demand version of this uh, webinar as well will be shared with you. If you have any questions, um, we'll also make sure that both mine and Mark's uh, contact details are provided to you as well. So if you have any further questions or anything you want to raise, uh, please let us know. We can provide um, more in-depth demonstrations into Teams, how to utilize Teams a lot more and our, around our cloud telephony uh, offering as well. We did a webinar on cloud telephony last week. The recording of that is available. Um, 
So if you if you want to use more demos around Teams calling, uh, Teams telephony, or with any any other of our team uh, cloud telephony uh, services, uh, Mark and I are very happy to jump on a call and give you more of a demo from there. Uh, but apart from that, again, it leads me to say thank you very much for joining us uh, joining us today. Um, again, we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar soon. Lovely. Thank you very much, everyone.